it's 6.10. OK, so, so we've got till 6.30? Yeah. OK, exactly. Do we, do we get like a little like uh, Yeah, I'm going to basically give minutes. you a five minute, one minute, and then I. OK, and, and you're going to be back be, I'll be behind the camera. OK, cool. Okay, so we'll see. All right. <coughs> All right, we are running just a little bit less than an hour behind. Um, right now, we're going into the 520 talk. Um, we have Isaac here, Isaac, and we have Yale, um, who's not in the program, but they're together. They're going to be talking about psychosonics, hacking the human brain. How, uh, I totally forgot everything you just told me because it's been a long day for me. I've driven twice from here to Seattle in the past like 24 hours. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, Amy, are we ready? Okay, cool. cool. Take it away. Here you go. Give him a round of applause. Hey, hey, y'all. Um, so yeah, our talk today is a little bit about uh, hacking the mind, um, using a couple of different tools, mainly sound and light. Um, I'll start off with a little uh, basics of uh, how, how, this, how this whole principle works. And uh, it's based on entrainment. Now, entrainment is this uh, principle of uh, chemistry, biology, physics, everything, in which any two things that are sharing proximity and are out of phase with one another, over time will gradually become in phase. And that two things that are not synchronized will synchronize over time. Um, for instance, if you have two metronomes and they're right next to each other and they're just a little bit off, then a very short amount of time they will synchronize. That's, that's the principle of entrainment. And it happens with, with all kinds of stuff and there's a billion examples, but you're smart folks, you get the idea. Um, in this case, we are entraining the brain. And it, it, the brain is a giant collection of neurons firing off electricity in, in a rhythm. This is all very simplified. Um, but you, bear with me. Um, we measure with, with the, we measure the brain with an EEG, which is an electroencephalogram. It's a bunch of electrodes uh, stuck to your head that picks up these rhythms and shows it as brain waves, right? So we've just got a little chart. When the brain is exposed to a stimulus, such as a beat, just a steady beat with a very steady beat frequency, it entrains to that frequency. So your brain waves, when you know stimulated by just a, a steady beat, will go to other. They will, they will synchronize to the beat pretty much. Um, just a brief, brief word about brain waves. Uh, we basically got four states that we're operating in. Beta, which is sort of our, our everyday waking, thinking, um, talking, analyzing. That's our, that's our top brain wave. It exists from about 40 hertz to around 10, 10 hertz. Below that is alpha. Alpha is 10 hertz to around 8, 7 and a half hertz. And uh, that's the state we're in um, when we just wake up and when we go to bed at night. Um, kind of this relaxed, uh, zony, trancey space. Um, when you watch TV, you go into alpha. When you read, you go into alpha. Kids below the age of puberty are mainly in alpha most of the time. They go a lot, a lot faster. They, they think differently. Um, and you, that's kind of the state that, that a lot of people go into when they meditate, just kind of this in the zone. Um, below that, from 7 hertz to 3 hertz, is the theta brainwave state. Uh, theta is a much more uh, deep meditative state. It's, it's sort of like a uh, somewhat lucid, but also uh, very relaxed. Um, it's the predominant brainwave in uh, REM sleep. REM is composed of a series of the different brainwaves, but theta is the kind of the one that characterizes dreams the most. It's very visual. Um, below that is delta, which is 3 to you know, 0.1. And that's like the abyssal plane of consciousness. That's just total blackout sleep. Uh, that's the kind of rest you want to get when you're sick and you just everything recharges. All, all these endorphins release, all these hormones release, and your body just fixes itself up. And that's, you know, that's the rest that we get in, in deep sleep. Um, so th these, these little brain waves, these can all be entrained to with a very simple technique of, of dialing in very specific beat, beat frequencies. Um, and I'm going to let Isaac talk about that just a little bit. Here you go. And stand next to him. Yeah. So the technology that we use is called binaural beats. Basics is really simple. 
when you have one frequency in one ear, let's say 100, 100 frequencies, 100 hertz, and then in the other ear you have 110, due to harmonics, when these two sound waves hit each other, they'll have that 10 hertz difference, will create kind of a, kind of like whoa, 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 another beat pattern. Your brain picks up these two separate signals, interprets them, and entrains to that difference. So it'll entrain to that 10 hertz. The human hearing range is around 30 hertz, 40 hertz. You can't hear much past that. So when you're trying to get to these super low states, you use these binaural beats to get to a place that you couldn't normally hear. That's one technology, and that one you have to wear headphones for. The second technology is called isochronics, which is basically the same concept except for clicking noises or really loud noises every few seconds. You go, doom, 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 doom. Uh, those are useful, but they're really annoying after a while. Binaural Beats has a nice kind of sine wave, simple sound that's not irritating. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's the basics of the technology. From there, you can use it for many different reasons. Uh, super easy to do yourself. All these different programs, all these different ways. You can download Holosync and try them out. We started trying it to, to understand what it's like to be in different states and really define those states. We go through being awake, being asleep, not paying attention to what's happening, being really aware of what's happening all the time, but we don't actively pursue and recognize those differences. Oh, perfect timing. Yeah. No, put that on. Oh, great. When you start paying attention to these differences, when you start listening to binaural beats and noticing when you're going from an aware hyperstate to a lower delta state, that awareness gives you something you can really base your decisions on. Like, oh, I'm feeling really tired. Or, oh, I recognize that I'm not quite at my full alpha state. That's one really useful thing we started using it for. Um, also, originally, we tried it for lucid dreaming. Understanding falling into those states like delta, you begin to recognize that moment of sleep where you still have consciousness, but you're technically asleep. And in that place is where you start being able to experiment in lucid dreaming or, or being in a place that's very imaginative. You can start using it for different practices, different, different thoughts you want to go through. Meditation, basically, techno meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Experience. Yeah. So a, a lot of our experiments have been in synchronizing groups. Originally, it was just Isaac and I and a couple of friends, and we'd get together and kind of have these slumber parties where we would all listen to very specific beat frequencies for like an hour, an hour and a half before we went to sleep to see if we could all kind of uh, synchronize our, our bio rhythm. Right? And maybe in that case, we could all go into the same REM at the same time and you know, practice some more lucid dreaming and things like that. Um, we took it to another level, and now it's this art project. It's, it's a sound installation. And it's, it's right there. It's that maroon and green yurt. And it's a whole series of uh, headphones. And it has both binaural beats and uh, isochronic tones inside of it. So you'll hear the speakers, which are just a, a pretty steady thump, 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 thump at different beat frequencies. And then if you put on the headphones, you'll have this sort of uh, this, this ambient kind of wash that is the binaural that only works when you have two separate inputs right next to your ears. Um, one, one of the, uh, the, the main drives of this is experiment is to see if we can synchronize consciousness among a bunch of people simultaneously. So, you know, get together in a group and you know, sit down and go into the same brainwave state at the same time. You know, what is that? What does that do? You know, well, that's that's what we're trying to find out. Cool. Nice. Yeah. What are we What are we doing right now? Uh, Consciousness in the machine. Consciousness. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so what uh, we we've noticed a couple of things uh, arise out of this. One of them is. Over prolonged use of, of binaural beats and brainwave entrainment, you can much more easily go to these different states of consciousness just on your own because you're so used to going to them you know, when you press play or when you dial in whatever you want to. Um, once you do it for a while, you just you feel what it's like to be in these different places. 
And uh, it's especially interesting because when you're asleep and dreaming, you might have this moment of lucidity and, and know, hey, I, I know what this feels like. Oh my god, I'm dreaming. And all of a sudden, you're lucid dreaming. And it's a really, really powerful tool for that. Um, it's also great for just stress reduction. Um, there's all kinds of uh, sound healing properties of it also, as far as uh, decreasing headaches, um, getting, uh, there, there's a lot of um, very specific beat frequencies that will release like uh, euphoric endorphins. Um, so it's used in a, in a whole variety of things, and y'all can look that up, if, if, or come ask us about that if you're interested in it. Um, yeah. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the more interesting parts about this is how it ties into machines. Um, so we're using machines to change our consciousness, change our brainwave function. How can our brain change machines? So this is something that they've been working on at a couple of different institutes for the last 30 years. Pretty much um, since kind of the, uh, the late 60s, you know, Cold War era, uh, the government and a couple of private institutions started looking into things like uh, remote viewing and telekinesis and psychokinesis. Um, what they found was that these things do have measurable results that are aberrant of, you know, probability in that, you know, people, people can uh, uh, remote view, which is basically seeing something that's not in your, you can't see it with your eyes, you, you feel it from far away. And the statistics of how often they correctly uh, hit a target, which is describe something that's, that's off somewhere else, is, is just way, way off the chart as far as like logistically probable. So what they started doing was uh, doing tests at um, Princeton, well, they started the uh, uh, Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Lab. They also started the uh, Institute for Noetic Studies and uh, Stanford Research Institute. Um, these, are, these are the main places that work in conjunction with the government to see how the mind and human intention can change machines. So imagine something like a random event generator, right? It's, it's either on or it's off. It's got these little electron tunnels, and the electron is either on one side or another. Uh, they found over the course of the last 30 years that when intention is placed on, on one side or another, then statistically, you know, it goes towards that side, you know, almost all the time. Um, they've developed uh, quite a few biofeedback machines that work with this type of technology. Biofeedback is basically like an EEG that you see. So you see your brainwave, and once you see your brainwave, you can choose to change your brainwave. And with that, they've got all kinds of cool little toys that are going to come out this Christmas. Um, there's, there's one that's like a, a force trainer. And it's like this, uh, this you know those, those tubes that they use for astronauts and they blow into them and they measure like lung capacity? Imagine that, but with a fan, instead of blowing into it with your lungs, you've got a little EEG around your head. So you think it, and the fan gets stronger and stronger, and it blows this little ball up this tube. So you know, it's, it, you'll see it all around. They're also using it. Um, for video games, so that there are uh, EEG controlled video games, there are EEG controlled um, wheelchairs. Um, there are all kinds of like practical applications for this. You know, deep sea diving, you can control a robot with your mind. Like, this is not the future anymore, this is now. So, um, in any case, uh, they've also been doing a lot of research as far as how intention can change on, on a higher level, on a, on a newospheric level. Right? Imagine the internet is the collective intelligence of everybody. Uh, they are trying to measure that, right? And they measure it by changes in the ionosphere and the Earth's magnetic field. So they've got these giant electromagnets all over the Earth. And when there are huge uh, consciousness events, like uh, the Super Bowl or 9-11, or probably Michael Jackson dying is going to be coming out pretty soon. That's going to be a big spike of just like a very specific frequency. And it just goes way out of whack for a couple of hours, usually right before the event happens, um, which is a whole other weird thing. But uh, they're basically measuring what the mass of human consciousness is. And we're just trying to tap into that, work with it, see if we can affect it more. And it goes pretty pretty nuts after that. Um, you got anything you want to yeah. add? So this project, um, and a lot of what we're talking about, is really brand new technology that we're trying to understand different researchers, MIT, Monroe Institute, Holosync, all these amazing people, scientists, intelligent people have been working on this for a long time. And that's what this project is about, is an art installation that you can join in on this experiment. You can try it out, tell us what you think, and 
we'll get feedback and data from that and move forward and try all these new devices. Yeah. Uh, it's also really easy to do yourself, really DIY. That's how we started to do it. You can get these programs for free um, on the internet. Uh, Ganoral, there's a binaural beat generator, there's a bunch for the iPhone. There's iPhone apps where you can just create your own little binaural beats and see how it affects you at work, hopefully not driving. Uh, yeah. Lots of programs. What is it? Neural Programmer is what we use. Neural Programmer is really, really excellent. It's a, it's a it great... It works with biofeedback, it works with audio strobe, which is light. Oh, there's a whole photic a light side of this also. You'll see it in there later on. If you have epilepsy or any, any like hesitation about bright, flashing, fast lights, um, you know, use your best judgment. <laughs> please, please. Yeah, yeah, we, we've signed the waiver. Our brains are Yeah, you've are signed now, the waiver, right. Yours, your brains so. are ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, we, it's really great place for all of us to experiment with. Um, if you want to get that information, please talk to us, go to our website. Uh, we'll have a lot of information and links there. And yeah. Yeah, and we do a lot of events in Seattle over the year. So there's yeah. sign ups and stuff like that. Um, any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yo. Um, well, if we think how y'all are like beta waves and alpha waves, right? If those are uh, specified frequencies. If alpha is in you know, between 7 and 10, what if you're able to, is there a way to control machines remotely? Like, instead of having that thing strapped, are we, is there possibly a way that we Well, that's because it's just, it's just, a, it's just a wave. It's a wave. Yes, exactly. In that, in that, we are all patterns, and we are affecting other patterns, right? Um, yes, the, that's the short answer. Is yeah, yes, you can control machines. Right now, it's basic, a very basic, simple yes or no. It's like, is it is it on or off? Yeah. Right. Um, the more we we develop this type of skill, the more we get used to it, and the more we train our brain to go into these different places and you know, disbelieve the consensus reality that it's impossible right. to, to make a machine change. You know, the more you break that belief, the easier it is to do. Um, there's a really cool uh, little thing that I've got. I didn't bring it with me, but it's called a mind lamp. And it's got this random event generator inside of it that has electron tunneling. Uh, it's, it's just a little quantum random event generator. And it's hooked up to this color changing LED. And what happens is you think a color, and it, changes to that color. And this is just one of those things is like, well, you know, sometimes I think the color in it doesn't change. Like, well, what is it? And do I need to be more relaxed? Am I concentrating too hard? Is it too much of like a left brain? Like, you know, the color will change and, and maybe it needs to be more of a right brain, like the color has already changed. You know, <laughs> there's there's all kinds of little tricks on, on how to do this. And you guys are working with computers all the time. Maybe sometimes it, you do the exact same thing, and the result comes out completely differently. Like maybe you've just been so fed up with the damn thing, and you're like, this time it is going to work because that's all there is. That's all there is in the future. That's all there is that's, that's going to happen. It's going to work. And whoa, shit! All right, I'm glad that works. And it goes all the way though, right? If, if we think in waves, can you know machines read our minds? Can machines read our minds? Um, can machines we need, read our minds? We need to talk to a machine. That's, that, that's po possible, but I am not the person to ask about that. Yeah. Um, technically, yes, because like that's what an EEG is. Yeah. So, but you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. nebulous. But well, let's yeah. open up to. Sorry. The EEG. We don't, we don't really use a whole lot of biofeedback for EEGs. I believe there's one coming out either later today or tomorrow, and we can hook it up. And uh, you can see channels. Channels? Um, with the particular research that we base a lot of uh, our project on and our, our findings are based off of the Monroe Institute and a few other institutes doing this research. We don't personally own an EEG because they're thousands of dollars. Uh, but we're working on it. There's a few really good mobile USB EEGs coming out soon. Emotive is a great one, if anyone yeah. here. It's a, it's a consumer gain um, controller. That's an EEG reader. And you look at the open EEG product? No, I have not. So I'd love to talk about that. <laughs> but yes, you had a question. Oh, uh, just on the non-DIY side, 
of it's possible to create sound in a specific space using a phased array of speakers. Mm -hmm. So you were saying that it's, you have to use headphones, and from the DIY standpoint, yeah, we would have to use headphones, but it, it's at least possible to create two separate zones with different beats on you know, targeted someone's head. Yes. Yeah. They would hear it. Yeah, there's, there's been a, a few different devices with that. Um, like Binaural Sky is the name of one. There's a few other ones that use hypersonic sound that yeah. when the sine waves hit certain places, it creates a sound at that place. There There's a few other technologies. There are very specific speakers that yeah. focus sound into almost like a laser. So they use these in, I think, uh, in like yeah. malls. You, you walk past an advertiser on like a screen, and you, you won't hear anything when you're here. As soon as you step into the speaker, you hear it. And as soon as you step out, you don't hear it anymore. So as long as you can you know, focus it right at the two ears, and it's very discreet, then yes, you can create the effect, but you know you can do the same thing with like a drum. So, well, thank you, everyone. Right. Um, Are we done? Yeah, yeah. we're okay, done. Cool. Yeah. Our project is going to be open here for most of the events. So come on in. There's going to be lights. So you're going to know when it's passive, when it's when it's open. Um, feel free to come and talk to us about it. We're really excited to get feedback and and bridge information. So, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Cool.